Welcome everybody. Um, we've invited uh, Dr. Eric Matheson from Rochester to discuss a paper of his um, on the predictors of relapse and treatment outcomes in biopsy-proven giant cell arthritis, a retrospective um, cohort study. So, Eric, please um, give us a little bit of background information on why you did the study. And thanks very much for asking me to do this. So, we know that patients with giant cell arthritis are treated with steroids. The only treatment for giant cell arteritis, in fact, is with corticosteroids. What we don't know is why some patients need more steroids, why some patients relapse, why patients need to be treated longer than others, and suffer the side effects of prolonged steroid exposure. Mm -hmm. So what we did in this study was we looked over a 15-year period mm -hmm. in a population of patients with giant cell arteritis based in Olmsted County, Minnesota, mm -hmm and examined their steroid use. Mm -hmm. And over a 15-year period from 1998 through 2014, we made a number of key observations about how patients mm -hmm. do who are on glucocorticosteroids. Some of the important findings from this study mm -hmm. are, first of all, that half of patients relapse in the first year. Right. And by five years, actually, 80% of patients will relapse. Right. It turns out, though, that patients who are treated with higher doses of steroids, so 40 milligrams a day and mm -hmm. more per day mm -hmm. in the beginning, mm -hmm. have lower relapse rates and taper their steroids more quickly mm -hmm. than patients who are started on lower doses of steroids, less than 40 milligrams right. a day. Mm -hmm. So that is an important observation, I think, when we consider the overall steroid burden right. of patients who have giant cell arteritis and are treated this way. Mm -hmm. We are endeavoring to try to reduce the amount of side effects that patients have mm -hmm. from steroids, and so understand, understanding how this mm -hmm. occurs in terms of the steroid tapering is mm -hmm. really important. Right. We tried to examine also who are the patients that tend to relapse mm -hmm. beyond those patients that are receiving the lower doses of steroids initially. Mm -hmm. And what we identified was that patients who have diabetes mm -hmm. and patients who have hypertension mm -hmm. are more likely to relapse than patients who don't have these conditions. In addition, women are more likely to relapse as well. We're not exactly sure why right, right. it is that right. these groups of patients have more relapses. Other authors have actually also identified hypertension as a reason for relapse, and we're not certain if it's related to a reluctance on the part of the treating physician right. to use high doses of steroids in a patient who has hypertension yes, yes. or who has diabetes initially. Yes. And an important clinical message out of this is mm. that while, on the one hand, you're trying to keep your patient from developing side effects mm -hmm. of steroids, mm -hmm. worsening of diabetes, right. worsening of hypertension. Right. On the other hand, you might actually be doing the wrong thing if you are using too low a dose and then yes. your patient has protracted exposure yeah. and over time yeah. uses more steroid than they would have had you started with a higher dose in the first place. Right, right. All right, um, Eric, I, I thought this was a um, really um, interesting observation and um, I, I really encourage the um, viewers of this video to read the full article and um, you know, pay particular attention to this key message of the importance of a high enough baseline steroid dose. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, I think that's the main message that comes out of this. And uh, it also, I think, ultimately emphasizes that we really do need better therapies for yes. giant cell arteritis. These side effects are very common yeah. in this study. We didn't talk about it too much. Yeah. But in, in this patient population, as I think in most patient populations of patients with giant cell arteritis, more than 90% of patients suffer some steroid-related yes, side effects. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you for, um, very much, uh, Eric, for coming and highlighting this paper.